All right, so in the last video, I destructively, very carefully destroyed uh, a Future Sonics MG6 and a UE5, uh, the MG6 having a round uh, speaker, small speaker like driver, which we can see here. I've soldered it onto the end of a, a cable so we can power it up. And the UE5 having the two armature based transducers, a low and a high unit, uh, which I've left kind of dangling there and hopefully they still work. So let's take a, a little bit deeper look into these two different transducer types. Um, they both have their advantages and disadvantages. Um, the speaker type driver's got a larger diaphragm. It's more conventional. It's more like what we're used to hearing with a speaker. Um, it's, you know, just a diaphragm to a coil and the coil moves and when it moves towards its limits, it hits resistance, mechanical resistance. And, um, you know, it's, it's a sound that we're very accustomed to because it's how most speakers are built. The armatures, on the other hand, have a metal plate between two magnets and some coils that are attached to a little pin and little pins attached to a diaphragm and the diaphragm is inside an enclosure and it moves the diaphragm back and forth with a considerable amount of force and then that creates pressure which um, sound pressure plus positive negative pressure that comes out a small opening or a little hole in it and um, <clears throat> but there yeah there's one a uh, really fundamental design differential between the two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play music here and hopefully not get flagged by YouTube. Um, let's see. Um, I'll f figure out something here. Okay, a little Daft Punk here. All right, so I've got the little speaker first. And this is also on, so we'll move it further away. And I'm going to hold it up to the microphone here. And... I'm going to spin it around and this is pointing at the uh, recording mic and this is pointing away from it. Now what happens with a normal speaker is since there's a diaphragm and there's an opening in front and an opening behind, um, we would normally put that in an enclosure and port the enclosure or tune. We have to do something with the sound that comes off the back of a speaker because if you let the sound from the front and back combine, they're out of polarity with each other and they will cancel out and you won't have any low end. And um, it will be, it just, you, you're losing half your energy or close, a, lot, a high percentage of your energy is lost in cancellation. And I can demonstrate this fairly easily by hitting play. By hitting play. And if I take my hand and I seal off around this driver so the back of the sound doesn't get to the microphone and create an enclosure with my hand with it you should be able to hear that in the recording and if I take it off and I remove the enclosure um, that's because the back of the sound the back of the driver the output from the back of the driver has to be dealt with um, either separated in an enclosed box or vented uh, typically with in-ears they will vent those and put a small port to let that sound out in a little chamber and allow those driver diaphragms to move freely because if you seal it off it has a hard time moving and it tunes it uh, doesn't get a lot of low frequency response um, so but the challenge with that little vent is it's gonna let in now you no longer have sealed ears you're gonna let in sound from the outside world and get into that band and so it's gonna have a more open sound it's less sealed um, whether that's desirable or not depends on the person, the application, the artist or musician. Uh, conversely, if we look at, let's see if I can get this out of the way. If we look at the uh, armatures, um, they are sealed with the exception of a tiny little opening on the end. And these, you can see, there's two tiny little openings, one for each, and they're summed together acoustically through a, uh, a little plastic tube. Now, if we fire these up, and I play these with, 
Now it should gain some reflectivity, but the low end should be there regardless of whether I block the back off. There is no real opening to the back of these. Um, now there is an effect of having a larger plate, but it's not. That. Well, let's try another thing. Let's put, um, I'm going to we'll make the world's smallest driver horn. Let's seal these off. And put the horn on there. All right, just for fun. Okay, uh, those are the fundamental differences, or no, not the fundamental, that's one fundamental difference is uh, with an armature, you don't have to deal with the back, the output of the back of the driver and vent it and port it and create an enclosure. It's already enclosed in that little armature um, uh, device and the output is your um, full range. So it's almost like a pre-rigged sealed enclosure. Um, one of the challenges with armatures is a lot more going on there. You've got a metal plate attached to a pin, attached to a diaphragm. The, it's a more complex device. There's a lot more stuff going on in there and to tune. And because of that, they tend to have this high frequency resonance. I haven't checked all that out, but um, we'll dive more into that with our test equipment. All right, well, that should um, sum up our destructive uh, disassembly, our delicate fine-tuned disassembly of a pair of in-ears. Armature versus conventional speaker driver. Cool, more to come. Awesome. So thank you for hanging out and I hope you found this video and others that I do interesting and informative and check out soundtools.com. Take a look at the products that I personally designed, some solutions for the pro audio industry, uh, analog over Cat5, a bunch of testers, um, and other useful tools. Um, ratsound.com has got our sales department, rental department, install department. Uh, we sell a wide variety of pro audio and AV gear. We do installations, small to large, and we do rentals for everything as small as local clubs and backyard parties all the way up to Coachella Festival and artists like Pearl Jam, Jack Johnson, Blink-182. And thanks for hanging out.